Hello and welcome to Unlikely Gamer. Today I'm going to be diving into an awkward topic, our painting mistakes. In this video I'm going to cover what I consider to be the top seven painting mistakes miniature artists make, but I'm also going to tell you how to avoid them. So get comfortable, grab your brushes, and let's embark on this self-discovery journey together. The first and often overlooked mistake is neglecting to clean your miniatures prior to painting them. It might seem really trivial, but dust and grime sneakily mixed with the paint, it leads to a chaotic and less vibrant look, sometimes creating little marks and pock sticks and things that shouldn't be there. So to circumvent this, always clean your miniatures prior to beginning painting. I like to use a can of compressed air. Uh, you can also wipe down the miniature with a tea towel, sometimes just using actually a makeup brush uh, or a really soft brush is a good way to get off any light dust and bits that might be on there. Um, if you want to go to the full extreme, don't ever handle your miniatures unless you have gloves on even to keep it from being oily underneath. So make sure that you are cleaning off your miniatures before ever thinking about picking up that paintbrush. Moving on to the second mishap is resorting to using the wrong type of paint. It is essential that not all types of paint are created equal, not even all acrylic types of paint are created the same way. Using the wrong paint can result in uh, a lumpy look, it can be overpainted, oversaturated, it just isn't the same. Buying cheap acrylic paint from a craft store can feel like a total cheat code, and this stuff works wonders if you're building a canvas or doing woodwork or anything else, but it will cause more coats or less coats because you just actually lose the distinction in the model because it's too thick, and it causes a lot of distortion in what the model looks like. Using acrylic paints that are specially designed for miniatures will give you a long-lasting finish, allow you to use less paint in the long run, and give you the crisp, professional results that you're aiming for on the table. The third mistake to avoid is not using enough contrast. This took me a long time to learn and still I have to actually remind myself that this need is something that I need to think about. Subtly has its place. Miniature painting requires a slightly exaggerated amount of painting because you're not actually looking at it from eye view here. You're doing tabletop gaming. You're looking from it at the bottom of the table. So you want to make sure that you have a broader range of light to dark tones to get enough dynamic feel to actually show the shape of the miniature itself from at least six to ten inches away. My fourth blender is kind of a throwaway. Uh, this one is obvious to people who have painted for a while, but I see it happen a lot in new painters, is overloading the brush with paint. This is a super common mistake, especially when you're starting out. It's going to obscure any fine details that exist on the miniature and that are a part of the plastic or metal already. So you want to make sure that you are doing less is more when it comes to the amount of paint. Yes, you need to thin your paints and actually use the edge of the brush to get a finer point if you can and get rid of some of that excess extra paint that's on the brush. This is going to change the way that your mini looks uh, because you're not going to get rid of those fine points on your miniature. You're going to have the uh, ability to see all of those details and pull them out with a secondary color. The fifth pitfall mistake is one that isn't even about painting at all. It's about the base. People forget that the base can be a part of the mini. This is important because it helps to draw attention to the mini itself, it sets the scene, it adds so much more context, depth, and it really helps it give a lot more attention to that model in particular. So don't leave it until the end. This is something that you need to prepare along the journey. Uh, a lot of miniatures nowadays are actually giving um, a component of the base along with it. I hope that they stop doing this. I absolutely hate it. Uh, I want to be able to build the base the way I want to do it. Anybody who's followed my miniature progress over the years knows basing. It's my jam. I love it. I'm actually going to create a new video uh, coming soon all about how I do my basing and some ideas of how you can do your basing better. Um, it's all about causing, again, like thinking about in context. So I've got these large models where the context, you know, they're jumping over huge terrain, they're crawling across buildings and things. When it, you think about something like uh, a simple model, what is the context? Where is the pose? How do you use the pose to actually create something uh, a little bit more dynamic or to go along with the pose? And sometimes it's just about 
giving you something else to paint that looks interesting. Um, I love this for all of the um, sisters where they're in the middle of ruins, you know, thinking about, I don't know, Ophelia 8, it's all collapsed, everything's gone away. Think about what that would look like. What does the ruins look like? What would be sitting around? Putting skulls on your bases is a simple way to start thinking about the bases. Do not forget your base. We are all about the base. The sixth mistake, and one that I am incredibly guilty of because I have zero patience, is rushing the drying process. When painting, you have to make patience your biggest virtue. When it comes to this, it's rushing the drying process is going to lead to smudging, it's going to lead to inconsistencies with blending, it's going to lose contrast on your paint job. You need to make sure that you work slowly and carefully and always make sure that you give ample time. You can also use the world around you. Put your miniatures in front of a fan, use a hair dryer on a low heat setting or a no heat setting, put them in front of the heater or your uh, vent, whatever you need to do on a windowsill. You can help move the drying process along, but definitely wait for it. Unless of course you're doing wet blending. The seventh and final mistake is ignoring the details. These models are so beautifully sculpted and have so many details. This is what's going to bring your miniature to life, transforming them from an object to an actual piece of art. So make sure that you're using a fine brush, take your time and bring out those details. Write letters on the book page, pop out the lenses on a helmet, and for the love of God, drill your gun barrels. Attention to detail is going to make your miniatures stand out from everything else on the table. So there you have it, my top seven miniature painting mistakes and some ways to avoid them. We hope that this helps you on your journey to creating stunning miniature masterpieces. Stay tuned for more helpful tips and tricks on our channel. And remember, if you found this video useful, please like, share, and subscribe. Here's to happy painting, and until next time, may your dice always roll crits.